Hey there! Before you're about to dive into one of the episodes for our maternal mental health series, make sure that you have subscribed to our podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. If you like this episode, we would appreciate if you spread the word and recommend or even forward this episode or the whole podcast in general to another parent or to anyone who you think should be listening to this. If you find yourself asking how you can support us, the easiest way to do this is to give us a follow on Instagram at Stan Parenting Podcast and to rate us with five stars on the platform that you're listening to this. We hope you know you're not alone on this parenting journey and you enjoy the following episode. Let's get started. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to Damn Parenting, your English-speaking parenting podcast from Amsterdam. And we are your hosts, Maren and Eva. This is another episode within our Maternal Mental Health Month, where we are trying to give a 360 view on the topic of maternal mental health. And we have Zayanya with us today, who is a baby wearing expert and we wanted to touch upon the topic of how baby wearing can support mothers or the parents mental health in general a little disclaimer this is not an episode where we will be discussing how to strap the baby correctly and what is the right angle and these kind of tips the more practical tips zayana runs amazing workshops about this topic and you can always reach out on for this for these topics for further information we'll put all her info in the show notes but for now we really want to focus on the mental aspects and the benefits of baby wearing towards your mental health. So Zayanya, can you give us a little bit more insight on how does baby wearing support the mental health for the mother or the parent in general? Yeah, this is such a, wow, it's <laughs> such a big topic and I often don't know where to start. But I think where I like to start is that, I mean, we're already talking about this, but often we talk about how baby wearing is beneficial for the baby. And there's this whole list of benefits for the baby. And in the end, you kind of get this overview that baby wearing is very regulating for babies, right? They like being close to us. They like being held. They like movement. It regulates their nervous system. It regulates their digestive system. It regulates their temperature. And what we forget to talk about is that actually baby wearing is very regulating for adults. And people feel very calmed and reset by having their child against them, even when things are tired, even when they're ex exhausted. So there's a lot of different ways that baby wearing supports our mental health. Um, one of the easiest ways to imagine is through the simple concept of bonding with your baby and having your baby close to boost oxytocin and reduce cortisol levels. And the way to get that benefit the most is through skin to skin contact. And mm, so mm -hmm. I would say that all of us feel a lot of benefits of baby wearing when we do it with our clothing on. But if you're feeling low, or if your baby is feeling low, to actually take your shirt off and wear your baby with any carrier skin to skin is really, really powerful. I can keep going though. So <laughs> That's the start is the skin to skin. Um, when we wear our baby correctly, that means that their head is at the level of our clavicle or some people say close enough to kiss, which means you can just tilt your head down and kiss the top of their head. And this also means that your baby is always close enough to smell. And we know that when we smell our babies, we get kind of flooded with this like endorphins and good feelings. And there's something happening there biologically, neurologically with our olfactory senses that we're programmed into. So I think having our baby right there and smelling them regularly is very beautiful. And then also there's the reality that parenting as a new parent is stressful. Babies cry a lot. And we know that babies cry less when they're held and when they're on us. And so knowing that you're providing a safe place and that you're calming your baby in this way can help our mental health. And then that brings me also to the awareness that it really supports our own sense of resilience. And that is also very important as a new parent, that you're learning all these new things and you're not sure if you're doing anything right and it can feel really overwhelming. But as you get comfortable baby wearing and confident in it, it becomes this tool that you can turn to to know that you've got this. Like every time you pick up your carrier and put your baby in and they calm, 
it's like a positive reward to yourself too of, okay, what's next? And so that really builds resilience for parents. And then of course, there's then the added benefit of self-care for ourselves because babies can get like more than 90% of the benefits of baby wearing by being held by us, but then we can't take care of ourselves. So I truly view baby wearing as more of a tool for adults than for the baby, even though it's often promoted very much as something that's beneficial for babies. I think it's truly for us because then you have your hands free to make yourself some food, to finish whatever self-care routine maybe you were doing in the bathroom, to go out for a walk and get some sun or (laughs) fresh air. And that's really, of course, important. Lastly, Well, there's much more, but the other one I really wanted to highlight, I think people don't pay attention to enough is movement. So when we hold our baby or wear our baby and soothe them, we often bounce and rock. I think it's intuitive. We've figured out that that helps calm babies. And the reason is that it's helping to regulate their nervous system. And it's also emulating walking, which babies thrive when we're moving for various evolutionary reasons that this podcast is not long enough to go into, but mostly it regulates their nervous system. And we also know that when our nervous system needs to be regulated, movement helps us. And that can be dancing, it can be going for a run, but there's also this whole movement of um, tapping. If you've heard of tapping, like tapping yourself or shaking out your body, jumping, different types of things like that are regulating for ourselves. And Often we bounce our babies with stress in our bodies. We're kind of like, okay, baby, calm down, calm down. And we're bouncing, bouncing, bouncing. But if you pause for a second and take a deep breath and think, okay, we are going to bounce together and we are going to calm together. You open your nervous system to be regulated at the same time that you're regulating your baby's nervous system. And I think that's really beautiful. So you can bounce yourself (laughs) to regulation and bounce your baby to regulation or walk that off as well. One of my top tips for new parents is to not deflate that yoga ball that you have in the house from the birth and pregnancy because it is amazing for bouncing babies when you're too tired to be walking or moving. And if you baby wear while bouncing on a yoga ball, you can also work on your laptop. My husband has attended many Zoom calls while bouncing and baby wearing. (laughs) And you can also finish a meal or read a book or whatnot. So that's a good one. There's an abundance there. Well, if there's anyone still out there who's (laughs) doubting baby wearing, this was was the last, this was the last little thing that you needed to finally get that carry out man oh man that was really like so insightful and it makes so much sense and funny enough that it is so logical right and then of course we hear this what's good for the mother is good for the baby vice versa all these things but then we forget about this when it comes to baby wearing because it's just this tool you you do it but no one really knows why what you're supposed to do it and you feel guilty if you don't so it really is so beneficial for us that's that's very that's very true yeah So when I was pregnant, one thing I did want to do was try baby wearing. And obviously it's quite hard when you're in those last months. So it's one of those things that you're trying to figure out, I want to get this. And people give all these recommendations. There's a very famous brand and there's not so famous brand. There's lots of global companies, local companies. And when we were still pregnant, I did buy one. But then when we had the baby, it just felt like it was not the right fit. Like I felt it was too bulky and I didn't want to put a newborn in there. So I asked my Kramsorg and she said she was caring for another family and she gave a recommendation of that brand, Mm -hmm. which was a cloth one. And Mm -hmm. I was really anxious about that because doing the cloth thingy for the first couple of times, you're like, am I going to drop the baby? Is it too tight or not tight enough? And then after a while of carrying, I then needed a different one. And so we ended up with three baby carriers, essentially. There's many different types. Can you actually explain to us the different types of carriers and wraps that are actually out there? Yeah, your story is very familiar to me. Most families I work with have gone through some type of cycle like that. So we have unstructured and structured carriers. Unstructured carriers mean that they're mainly fabric, a long wrap. There's woven wraps and stretch wraps. They're quite different, actually, in their use and how you use, like what they're used for and how you use them. Then there's ring slings, which are also unstructured. It's a long piece of fabric with rings on one end and you wear it over one shoulder. 
A med dye is also an unstructured carrier. And then you have buckle carriers, which resemble kind of a backpack style. And the main brands are like Baby Bjorn and Ergo Baby for those. But there are actually many other brands that are not in the baby stores that are generally much more thoughtfully designed and much easier and more comfortable to use than the most commercial brands. And then you have half buckle carriers where they're similar to buckle carriers, but the straps over your arms and shoulders are actually long pieces of fabric that you tie. Those are the main categories. What is best for you is actually incredibly personal. So everyone wants me to answer what's the best carrier and it's not a question I can answer. Job as a consultant is to come and show the options and explain them and then for you to pick out what matches your learning style, your aesthetic, your lifestyle needs. So a lot of people think, oh, these wraps, these wraps, I need a wrap for a newborn. That's what they say is the best. It's the softest, et cetera, et cetera. But like you experience, many people experience a lot of anxiety and stress in learning how to tie them. And that's a pretty good sign that it's not the best carrier for you. And it's absolutely unnecessary to learn how to do that. If you see a wrap and you think, oh, that looks so cool, it's like baby origami, I want to learn that, it's going to be cozy, then you're game and you can watch some videos and figure it out. But if you see one of these long pieces of fabric and you think, oh my God, is that going to drag on the floor? How do I remember how to tie this? What if I drop the baby? which no one will drop their baby. But if you feel that way, then you know it's totally fine to to go towards something that you feel is simpler. Some people see buckle carriers and they think, yes, clips, buckles, easy, logical. And some people see them and think, that looks really bulky, that looks really artificial, I don't want a big waistband around my waist. So it's, it's very much whatever resonates with you. And the truth is that a lot of these Buckle carrier brands have now designed their carriers in such thoughtful ways that they're very ergonomic for babies and there is no longer the benefit that people once said existed for wraps. You don't need to wrap a baby with a wrap wrap to, to have like the most ergonomic fit for a newborn per se. So yeah, there's a lot of options. I, it's it's worth looking through them and then thinking what looks best to me. Or if you have the opportunity to go to a baby wearing workshop or work with a consultant, then you can hopefully actually try on a few different ones and see what you like best. And then within each of those categories, you're going to have like 100 brands to choose from. So <laughs> it's like shopping for a car. It's, it's not so straightforward. But I think right. this is a really insightful tip to go with the first gut feeling. How does this yeah. wrap, uh, wrap or carrier, how does this yeah. system make me feel? Like, what are my first thoughts? Yeah. And then you go from there because indeed they were so valid what you said, like, oh my God, this whole, of course, if you are looking for another challenge on top of having a newborn, then you yeah. go for that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is a very, I think giving its general compass between these categories how does it make me feel if i already get swept then out like Mm -hmm. let's not this is maybe then for later but yeah that was very very simple tip to not go through this is our third carrier why is it still not working yeah Yeah, because you're in the wrong system (laughs) yeah and i mean it's it's okay to try different ones right sometimes we think you like one and then buy it Mm. and later realize it's not for you and that's okay and Fortunately, you can sell them on marked plots or yeah. have some on as gifts, but, and that, that happens and, and babies grow and then you need a new shape or size. So it's pretty normal for families to have a few different kinds, but certainly don't feel like there's pressure to, to use a certain kind because your friends used it or because the internet mm. says it's better or whatnot. Well, that's what I was actually going to come back to there because you were saying about how you feel about it. Um, In my head, it's a case of when people are pregnant, they're very much into the whole aesthetics of things of I'm going to have this beautiful nursery and it's going to be so pretty and it's beige and, you know, oh, it's such an Instagram thing. And there's a very popular carrier out there, which uh, many of us have been shared to the voucher, you know, oh, you can guess, you know, it's probably 5% off the entire price of the damn thing. And it's just people are kind of pushing this like kind of aesthetic thing of like, oh yeah, but this one's the best one. And it's just mainly because it's an aesthetic pleasing, beautifully shot, like all the images are absolutely astounding. And it makes these mothers look 
beyond fabulous. And, you know, we all aspire to whatever that picture is on Instagram. But the reality is, is a case of some people will get it and it's it's not always going to be bidding for them, but you've already paid for it and then you're going to have to then sell it on. And that was the thing for me as a case of I was going for a more practical side, but it ended up yeah. not being for me. But I had so many people saying, but we got this one and you should because it's, you know, it's amazing. Yeah. So. Yeah, that happens a lot, especially actually Ergo Baby is an interesting one that um, it's one of the largest brands out there. They've done a very good job in sales and marketing. They're in the biggest baby stores. And because baby wearing is quite literally life-saving or life-giving, it's um, so wonderful and helpful when people have one of these carriers, they love it. They love it and they recommend it to their friends. And so it's it's one of these like, this was great. I love this. Here, you use the same one. But if I get to one of these families and they try on one of the other brands that I recommend, they're always like, oh, I didn't know it. This is what it feels like. Yeah. (laughs) Because like, for example, Ergo Baby is simply too large for me. It is a it is a large carrier, and I wear a size small shirt, and it's just too large for me. I can make it as tight as it goes, and it's too big for me to wear a newborn safely. But most people don't know that, so it, they just fit different bodies differently. And um, there's other reasons why it's not my favorite brand, but it's not like bad. It's just that there's like so many other brands out there people will never hear of that make really beautiful carriers. So yeah, there, there's a lot of that in parenting, right? Like this worked for me, it should work for you. And and maybe it would work for you, but maybe there's something better out there. But either way, you know, no matter what you do, as long as you're comfortable and your baby is happy, then baby wearing is working for you. And that's what's most important. There's There's no best brand. And I really do encourage people to realize that it is something that can really give back to you energetically and mentally, um, emotionally. And when you're having a hard day and you need to take your baby for a walk to chill out, sometimes we look at the stroller and we look at the carrier and we think, oh, she cries every time I put her in the carrier. I'm just going to take the stroller. Oh, I'm tired. I didn't sleep last night. I don't want to carry her. I'm just going to take the stroller. I don't have anything against strollers, but I just want to highlight that sometimes you may be surprised that if you wear your baby for 30 minutes in the park, you'll actually feel more refreshed than if you push a stroller for 30 minutes in the park because there is a power to that closeness and to that feeling of providing for your baby in a different way. So yeah, you were mentioning earlier as well about the whole um, regulation, like carrying it. It's regulation, not just for the baby, but also for us as parents. Could you actually speak to anything about reducing symptoms of postpartum depression or anxiety as well when it comes to this? Yeah, I mean, I'm not a mental health professional, so... And I, I think it's not something that's official. Like we've, there, there have been studies, actually. There's a study from the Netherlands that looks at fathers that if they use a baby carrier regularly in the first several weeks, it enhanced like their amygdala response to the crying of, of the babies and like how they felt con- attached to their baby. And then in terms of oxytocin and cortisol, we're actually not seeing very conclusive research about the changing of these hormones with baby wearing, but we do see it with skin to skin. So I'd say if you have an actual perinatal mood disorder or um, depression or something that you need help with, then I really, really encourage you to put the time into the skin to skin. We do see therapists and doctors recommending baby wearing because the the bonding and kind of the confidence and resilience that it gives parents really helps them with feeling like even if they don't feel like they're able to bond with their baby because of postpartum depression and anxiety, which is unfortunately very common and nothing to be ashamed of, then baby wearing can kind of force that. It's like, okay, I'm just going to put them in the carrier. I'm not feeling it. But it kind of starts to force that bond in like a material way almost. And then it, it can grow from there. So it is being used as like... Like a placebo, basically. Like, yeah, this is supposed some, to help. So something. it will help me. <laughs> yeah. And like I said, yeah. you're smelling your baby and you know yeah. you're providing for your baby. It's also a tool that's used for parents that are autistic or deaf because they're able to be more in tune with their baby when otherwise they'd maybe have a harder time turning towards their baby when the baby's in a different part of the room. So there are a lot of benefits to it. It's not like a cure-all, right? It's just one more tool. We need all those tools, though, I think. so. <laughs> but uh, also, yeah. this is still great for, for toddlers also, if we have listeners. Yes. 
that have not babies anymore. I use a carrier still with my almost four-year-old and for the exact same reason, sometimes yeah. because it's practical and we want to walk somewhere and I know it's going to be halfway through not walking anymore. So that's one reason. But also I've noticed when she has been in a bad mood or tantrum or after a tantrum, when it's very hard to connect again, I have instantly, and now when you said this whole thing of how does it regulate us, Sometimes I had felt I want her to be close to me. And I said, let's do we want to get the care in here and just walk around? And it has always helped us both be in contact without speaking. You know, it's yeah. like we're just there, we're walking or we're I'm doing my stuff. And it has regulated us both so much. So this is really so powerful still when when they get older and there's carriers out there for toddlers then. So something really yeah, to to look into. Yeah, absolutely. I also have found it tremendously beneficial for reconnecting um, and calming my my toddler whenever he would have a meltdown. Um, sometimes it was the only thing that could calm mm -hmm. him down. And then it also calmed me down <laughs> for sure. Yeah. Again, another tip or trick. There's a lot of baby carriers out there. Um, Zanya is actually a baby carrier consultant. You can find her on Adopting to Love on Instagram. Zanya, is there anything you'll be able to share with us from your background and from all your resources that you actually operate as, as you're not just a baby wearing consultant, but you are on quite an all round helpful person to parenting in general for everyone here in the international community. Is there anything else you'd like to add for our maternal mental health? I would just encourage people to spend time with their baby. But also remember, like, you know, sometimes people think that they really need to to do what's always best for the baby. But if you're feeling like you're struggling, then also take time for yourself. And remember that partners can benefit tremendously if you have a partner from baby wearing and that it also can be a great tool for them to calm baby if you need a break. So I think when I talk about baby wearing being beneficial for dads, I'm also talking about it being beneficial for moms that if both of you have this tool, then it's a great way for each of you to be able to take time away. So, you know, if if you're struggling and if you feel like you need support, then it's really important to to take that time for yourself and your baby will be okay when you come back. Well, thank you so much for joining us again. Daniel was previously with us for a Dom Chats episode where we talked about uh, sleeping with our children. That might be a, another interesting episode for people to listen to here for this maternal mental health. And hopefully we'll be having Zanya back again in the future because she is an abundance of resources of quite a lot of aspects of parenthood in general. So thank you again for joining us. Thank you.